Okay, so that was a minute and we're aiming to sort of recreate um, the gallery experience. We'd love for you to, to see this artwork in the flesh, but um, there's a bit of time to try and try and kind of mimic that for you. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop screen sharing and I'm going to introduce our guest um, for you this evening. So Deanne Crooks is an artist educator. Much of Deanne's practice considers the collaborative and collective experiences of others engaging with various disciplines. Deanne's practice exists with themes of activism, debate and culture and Deanne's relationship with contemporary art has cultivated a strong sense of play with political, moral and emotional themes, using art as a tool for education. During Deanne's fellowship with Black Hole Club and within recent commissions for the film and video umbrella, Vivid Projects and Reframed Network, Deanne has been experimenting with the parameters of contemporary art adjacent to and in harmony with blackness. Using video, performance and fine art, Deanne continues to address cultural pedagogy with a focus on the oracy of marginalised persons. Unapologetically and deliber deliberately blurring the lines between education and art, Deanne continues to reflect on the authenticity and inclusivity of their own artistic process and challenge the culture within British art and education institutions. <clears throat> Having lectured at various institutions across the UK and now working with Innova for the Contemporary Arts Space project, Deanne intends to on further amp amplifying discussions of politicised identities within schools, colleges and universities, prioritising the voices of marginalised young people. Exploring what it means to take up space, cement a sense of belonging and use artistic tools to have pivotal conversations. Deanne's commitment to transforming and energising hegemonic spaces is greatly anticipated. Um, so we're really happy to have Deanne and I'm going to pass over to you, Deanne. Um, while we're watching the performance, um, we recommend that you change your viewing settings to speaker side by side mode to get the best out of the uh, performance. Okay. Off you go, Tia. Thank you. Thank you so much. Miss Lala, Miss Olga, I can read about you in textbooks. If I search for you, I can tell of all the accomplishments that follow you. Acclamations resting on your headstone, in abundance, but still short of what you really achieved, who you really were. This history describes the sheer power of your ivories. Even in your black strength, they speak of whiteness. But nine years old is too young. You were too young to be so strong. But we celebrate you and your strength anyway, your ability to lift and uplift. If I search for you, I will read people write about your strength as a trick. But you and I both know that this strength is no trick or treat. And there is no illusion about where blackness meets strength. That exceptional ability you had of carrying more than your own weight was passed down to the generations that came after you. I have to confess, Miss Lala, that when I read of you, I held my breath. I waited in anticipation, anticipating the trauma that usually concludes our existence. I turned those pages faster than I usually would, anticipating the end of your journey. 
readying myself for the trauma that often comes with existing while black. Ready and reading, my eyes fumbled clumsily across your love story. I love a love story. And there is so much love that exists with strength. And it takes all your strength to love yourself while black. Described as a 30 year old Amazonian eclipsing every other act. Acting for your bag, your womanhood meant that you continued to carry long after you stopped performing in the circus. Tell me, Miss Lala, was it harder carrying three men by your jaw or carrying your three children? What these books and this Google cannot tell me is the cost of your strength. These pages will tell me that your skill prevailed despite racism, but this level of strength exists as a result of racism. Nobody chooses to be this strong, nobody. Applauding you with the same hands used to slap you in the face, I don't know how you faced this every day. Did they love your strength and hate your skin, Miss Lala? Who drew the line that stood between you, your melanin and your muscles? And now lines are drawn to remember you or celebrate and spectate you. Performing acts that would change the circus industry forever. Whilst they act as if your talent resolved all conflict. Speaking of strength, they speak of you as if you were successful due to your strength, how European of them, to accuse people of making everything about race, yet in Europe they named you Olga the Negress, Venus of the Tropics, African Princess, Olga the Mulatto. Your strength could not outrun your blackness, they wouldn't let it. Growing tired of those who draw conclusions about our strength, blackness is being tired of these expectations. Tired of assuming that we never feel tired, weak or in pain. And this drawing tells of your strength, but could even the greatest of artists draw your exhaustion? Respectfully, I've, I've got to ask, were you tired, Miss Lala? Did strength protect you after all? Were you more palatable as a performer? Because this history, tells of a world who found your blackness hard to swallow. So we danced to be more digestible, running and singing from the fields to the stage, singing for your survival, an agenda as old as time, a slogan that shouts, entertain me in exchange for your rights. If only you were the color of your teeth, your honor, would succeed your skin. Audiences able to separate. Good at sports, likes music, needs surveillance. Tam Joseph paints past and present, sports, singing, swinging from that bar for some respect that never arrives. In high school, I watched so many footballers that looked like me winning trophies for this Britain trophies filled with banana peels. And it hit me <laughs> that my ability to perform cannot protect me. I wish I could break bread with you, Miss Lala. I'd ask you 21 questions. But first I'd ask you how it felt to carry the weight of that title wrapped tightly around your waist. It reads, strong, independent black woman. It is a beautiful thing to capture blackness, 
to have and be consumed by this black skin is everything. I have dreamed of returning to my mother's womb just to be hugged by a black woman once more. I watch as this world watches me, watching our blackness and seeing it as both a spectacle and a stain. Lala has curly hair and stands simply. Simply her hair stands upwards, reaching towards the sun. Hair tall like mountains, immovable and unapologetic, standing and never falling, never touching her shoulders because there is no room for anything other than the world on these shoulders. So Degas watches and draws from afar, aloof in his skill and fortune, fortunate enough to be in your presence, presenting you to the world on a stage bigger than the one you were used to. So they continue to watch you perform, both on and off stage, for your survival and for your peace of mind, the most talented performer, performing exceptionally, because you, you, you cannot be black and mediocre. You were not afforded the privilege of, of being mediocre. So there you were impressing the unimpressive for a less than impressive price, a spectacle and a shame, a spectacle and a stain. It is such a shame that Degas' ability to capture your beauty was not enough. It is a shame that you had to wait until now for your talent to exist without terms and conditions. Performances of an imaginary Africa, they say. <laughs> if I scoff any louder, I will awaken my insecurities. So I'm going to tiptoe through this part, lest I waken the trauma that rests within. Performances of an imaginary Africa. Imagine that, violating a continent, stripping us of everything but our creativity, only to ask us to then use that creativity to impress them. I know many would prefer for me to speak only of Miss Lala as a woman who shattered ceilings. I know how much this country believes in meritocracy. I know it is easier to spectate and celebrate blackness, to give a pat on the head and a belt that reads strong, independent black woman. To squirm at the thought of such things is a good thing. Clenching is the least we could do for Miss Lala, whose body endured much more discomfort. For Miss Lala, I would be uncomfortable. And I'm not a pessimist. Actually, my existence honors the existence of hers. And I speak of strength, spectacles, and blackness as if they're not friends. They are, in fact, family. No say in the matter, but related nevertheless. I'm, a, I'm proud and ashamed of a few things. Ashamed that you were compared to an animal, my dear Olga. Ashamed that you could not completely enjoy the thrill of performing without these ramifications. I am proud to see you immortalized in this art. Proud to call myself an artist and performer in the name of blackness and strength. Yet I'm ashamed that we have not traveled further as a nation from stories like yours. You would be proud of what we've accomplished, proud of generations that came after you. Ashamed and proud that being a spectacle and a stain was not in vain, but to honor and respond to this drawing and this name, Miss Lala, honored by Diane and drawn by Degas. Thank you so much, Diane, for that performance. Excellent. So I think the plan was now to for you to maybe talk a little bit more about your practice and then we can um, open out to kind of questions, comments and discussion. So if anyone's had any thoughts through throughout that performance or, or anything they'd like to discuss, please do pop it in the chat box and we can pick that up when um, we've heard a little bit more from Diane about her process, her practice, and how that performance sits within her work. Thank you, Becca. Thank you. Sorry, I'm just getting my bearings together. 
Um, yeah, so I'm just going to talk a tiny bit about the making of that. Um, in fact, if I just share my screen one more time, uh, let's go back to the drawing. Um, hopefully you can all see that yes yeah okay cool um yeah so these this is obviously the last screen that i um finished the performance on um making this was interesting because i i for those of you who, who don't know a little bit about my practice when i first started doing desktop performances i was inspired by um how a lot of artists were sort of starting to think about how they could do mood boards and get their thinking out there onto a screen and they were using their, their computer desktops literally as, as a space for um, imagery, different visuals, um, clippings and things to help them communicate something and um, there's there's two artists in particular who I sort of I've seen use this this technique that was quite inspiring one of them being um, Kathy Wade um, who also leads leads the fellowship that I'm in in Black Hole Club and there's a poet and activist based in London called Kaya Isaiah Jamal who also uses this sort of approach of um, you know visuals on a screen and so I did this back in 2000 and uh, wait 2020 was that, that's only last year right yeah so um last year um I believe sort of the early part of last year and it was a way for me to to develop ideas and think about what I was trying to experiment with and play with so I kind of wanted to use that and combine it with an original monologue that I wrote um about Miss Lala and, and when I was given all the research about the drawing about Edgar Degas about who she was as a performer I was quite moved I was challenged by it in a way and it feels quite real to me because this idea of blackness and strength and and even just this this awe that we have for somebody that is so strong um felt quite parallel to now really you know looking at how we admire black athletes and performers and musicians in the same way um and the strength as as some sort of armor I guess so yeah I, I did some research first um, as I would normally do in, in, in my process just a lot of research um, and then I usually play a lot with like free writing and automatic writing um, to just get those initial immediate thoughts out of my mind onto paper or onto my phone sometimes I like to use my phone notes app to write in um, and then I start to sort of connect the images to the words and so on. So yeah, it's been it's been a really exciting, interesting process for me to to respond to this drawing, um, especially as someone who also uses drawing in their practice. Um, it felt really nice to be able to combine someone else's drawing with the moving image sort of poetry side of my practice. Um, and yeah, the, the clippings really was to sort of highlight some key points, some key, um, just, just some key lines from the script really. I, I think the monologue in itself is, is the bit that I tend to put more of myself into. Um, that really does take a lot of my, my energy and my heart to, to play with words and to tell a story in a way. So um, yeah, I was just really trying to, this is, a, this is a great way, in my opinion, for me to sort of make connections and, and draw things together between imagery, between current experiences, between, you know, a drawing from, that is, that is obviously pretty old and quite famous. Um, and also an experience of someone from, you know, the 1800s. And, and we talk of representation a lot nowadays, and it's a word that you hear thrown around, you know, diversity, inclusion, representation. But I think there are still so many different areas where we know that people like Miss Lala existed, but we don't know enough. And, and um, it feels further from us than it actually is. It feels like it's 
thousands of years ago you know we, we sort of can treat certain topics because we're uncomfortable with them we treat them as if they're they're really ancient and actually that they're not um and so that's what I was also trying to unpack here in the, in the text um yeah I think that's I'm not sure if I've used up my 10 minutes but um <laughs> yeah that's just a kind of glimpse into how I was working for this performance in this piece and some of the things that I wanted to include and uh, was trying to unpack in my writing process as well. 